So just a quick 4th of July Independence Day message here from Quick Show. I wanted to cover the difference between liberty and liberation, or at least the way liberation is used today. This is something we want to identify as, you know, a a different meaning than perhaps what liberation used to mean. In our culture, in the, the mass change that is happening right now in the United States and to some degree in the West, is actually the opposite of liberty. Liberty is tied to choice. It is the ability to make your own decision, to make your own way. And this is a very important part of the gospel. When you go through the Book of Mormon, you will see that the doctrine of Christ is tied very firmly to agency and the ability to develop that agency. The United States, the founding of America, the U.S. Constitution, this was inspired to allow men and women to make their own decisions, to expand and to grow through that agency. Liberation fights against that system. It's like going back to the war in heaven. It is no mistake that on one side, we have the adversary, Lucifer, who is fighting against our agency. What we don't think about usually is that on the opposite side, where Jehovah slash Jesus Christ is advocating for the Father's plan of salvation, that he is fighting for agency. We usually think of that plan as being that of being the Redeemer, and he volunteers. But see, he's fighting against that adversary. It is the opposite plan. He is fighting for liberty. He is fighting for choice. He is fighting for agency. But what comes with that liberty is discrepancy, is an unequal outcome. And this, I believe, in the war in heaven is exactly what Lucifer is fighting against. It's not just that he wants to originally or his primary objective is to remove agency it's that he wants to remove an unequal outcome because for him it is unfair it is wrong to allow agency to create this disparity like we have three different kingdoms of glory when you allow agency and may allow people to make choices they're going to make different choices that will give you different outcomes But that is the plan of salvation. That is the plan of happiness. As Elder Kieran went over in General Conference this last April, giving those different names to the plan of God, the plan of the Father, one thing I think could have been added as a title for the plan of God, and there was a couple others I think as well, but one that could have been added is the plan of liberty. Jehovah is fighting for the liberty of mankind. And when you think about it in those terms, as he advocates for the Father's plan of liberty, he knows there will be disparity. He knows there will be problems with this. So he himself, as he advocates for this plan that will create disparity, volunteers himself to be the sacrifice, to pay for sins, to allow people to repent, to choose what is right, and to become more like God through the liberty of their agency. Now, another example of this, is if you look back at Thomas Paine's common sense, he talks about royalty, especially the king of England. But he talks about royalty and the problems that you have there with an elite class. So he says that when you actually pull back, as he calls it, the dark cover of antiquity with all that those ages of royalty, He says, basically, what you end up with is just a thug. He calls it the principal ruffian of some restless gang. And that is what they become. That is what you become when you have power. And it's very difficult to get around that. You go through the Old Testament, look at all the kings, given the greatest instruction with the prophets around them and the court there of the kings, the wise men, etc. And most of the kings just can't do it. They can't stick to being a servant they end up becoming a tyrant. He says of the common men and women, he says, he who hunts the woods for prey or the naked or the untutored Indian is less savage than the king of Britain. (laughs) It's just that it's glossed over, right? And so we have the same thing today. We have an elite class and that elite class naturally 
as with any civilization, is going to gain more and more and more power. We can see this in the media with the narrative that is provided. You can see this with large corporations. You can see this with career politicians as they distance themselves more and more from the everyday man and woman. Now, you might say to yourself, well, don't, Greg, don't we want to liberate ourselves from that, from that system, from them? Sure. But again, the difference is the way liberation is used today is to fight against freedom. If you were actually using the term liberation to fight against elitist control that was actually anti-liberty, great. But that is not the way we get it from the elitists. One of those places of elitism is academia. That's, that's where they change the words, right? We get philosophy, we get historians, social scientists, etc., political scientists. And that is what they have done with liberation. So liberation, when you see it, be very careful. That doesn't mean when you read, even in the scriptures, and it says liberation, that that's what is meant today. It's that today they have taken that word liberation and corrupted it to mean liberate me from the shackles of a true order. Liberate me from Christianity. Let's deconstruct the religion. Liberate me from the doctrine of Christ. Liberate me from the family. Liberate me from an order of sexuality and throw all of these shackles off of me. That's where liberation is used. Throughout the Book of Mormon, as with the war in heaven, liberty is tied directly to the doctrine of Christ. And so when we celebrate the 4th of July, Independence Day, we ought to think about that. Ultimately, that liberty is rooted in the doctrine of Christ. It is not just a national thing for us. It shouldn't be. In many ways, we can look at that as celebrating Jesus Christ as we celebrate liberty and celebrating our choice. And do we always defend that? Do we, do we defend the movements, the systems, the policies, the doctrines, the laws that will allow us to have liberty and make our own choices. I wish you the very best Independence Day and 4th of July. My family and I are heading to a rodeo and seeing a big fireworks show. I hope you're going to have a great time and I hope this message means something to you. Thanks for listening.